Jason, why did you order so much? You won't be able to finish that food. Two plates of rice with two bowl of chips and chicken wings, a pack of juice, a plate of spaghetti carbonara, sushi and chocolate. That's too much bro. What is happening? Well, I'm starting with a classic spaghetti carbonara, followed by a plate of sushi rolls. Yes, I said sushi. Then, I'm diving into some chicken wings with a side of garlic fries. The two plates of rice will be properly dealt with and to top it off, I couldn't resist ordering the chocolate lava cake for dessert, the pack of juice can now serve as water to step the food down. Are you sure you can eat all of that? You don't have to eat all that. Oh, I know I am eating a lot today, but hear me out. Starting from tomorrow, our church is organizing a 7 days fasting and prayer session, it is a yearly program and I need to fast. Also, I need to make sure I fill my stomach well tonight. It's all about preparation for the spiritual journey ahead. You know that fasting is a lot, you need to be physically, mentally prepared. That's why I am eating this much Vincent. But that shouldn't make you eat like this. You will become hungrier by tomorrow morning. Says who? Watch me please. This is just too much. And, why is it that you fast just once in a year, and that's when the church organizes a fasting and prayer? Isn't that enough for God to answer once prayer? Listen, you don't have to do too much. Just observe it and God sees your heart. I don't think so Jason. Has God answered your prayer since the time you've been asking? It is just morning and I am already tired. Thank you Jesus for waking me up today. This is officially day one of my fasting and prayer. You know my needs Lord Jesus. Please answer my request of over six years. I am tired already. In Jesus name I pray, Amen. Will I be able to fast till 6 p.m.? This is so tough. Anyways, I just want to fast to clear my conscience. At least, I can boldly say that I joined them in the fasting and prayer. Let me quickly hurry up to work. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Jason. I was told you wanted to see me. Yes, boss. I just want to inform you that I am currently fasting. I'll be fasting for seven days. Just to make this official, in case you notice anything unusual about me. Jason, have you fasted before? I mean, ever since you were born. Yes, boss. Remember I told you last year. Oh? I remember now. But, must you always announce it whenever you want to fast? Just to let you know my predicament, sir. It is okay, Jason. You can go. Thank you, sir. Why is the time so slow today? This is quite disturbing. The time is just too slow. Anyways, I have just 15 minutes left. Let me quickly pray. Lord Jesus, I have fasted today. You know my wants and needs. You know my prayer request. Lord Jesus, please answer my prayer. It's been six years today that I have been looking into you. Lord Jesus, please don't forget me. I am about to break my fast now, bless the food O Lord. In Jesus name I pray, Amen. The time is just too slow. 30 29 28 27 26 25 24 23 22 21 20 19 18 17 16 15 14 13 12 11 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 It is 6 p.m. Time for food. Hello Jason, it's been a while. Hello Julian. How are you doing? I am fine. I haven't seen you this week. Where have you been? Do you want to tell me that you didn't know I am fasting? 
I have been fasting since yesterday, hence, the reason why you didn't see me around. I have been by myself. Oh. You fast? Of course, I am a Christian. I am actually looking into God for miracles. I will be fasting for seven days. Today is the second day. Oh. Nice one. I need to go now. All right, Julian. <laughs> Jason doesn't know the spirit that lives inside me. He doesn't know I waste people's prayer. His prayers shall not be answered. I'll make sure I waste his prayers. Fool. A wise man keepeth his mouth shut but the fool will always spill everything about his life. Such a baby Christian. Jason, I remember you asked me out on a dinner date. Can we go out tonight? Julian, why are you accepting my offer today of all days? You know I told you that I am fasting. I have just five days left, let me finish my fast and we will go out the following day. I don't want to commit sin while fasting. But you can commit sin after, right? I have nothing to lose then. Right now, I need God to answer my prayers, please. We can do anything after the prayers. It's okay. We will go out after your fasting and prayer then. Thank you, Julian. Dear God, I come to you with a heavy heart, filled with murmurs and complaints. For over six years, I have prayed to you for financial settlement and marital success, yet I have not seen the miracles I seek. I feel discouraged and weary, wondering why my prayers seem unanswered. Help me, Lord, and answer my prayers. In Jesus' name I have pray, Amen. I insist, refund me now. I am no longer buying. I didn't know it's that expensive. I'm sorry sir, but we don't do refunds for food items. What kind of rubbish is this? Is it my fault that you didn't put price tag on that item? I need a refund now. You need to calm down sir. Take it easy please. The difference isn't much. Please bear with us, we don't do refunds here sir. Are you normal? How dare you tell me to be calm? What rubbish? Do you know who I am? Thank your stars fasting, I would have dealt with you mercilessly. You are fasting and you are roaring like lion this way? If you weren't fasting, you would have slapped me or what? May God forgive you. This food is taking so much time. It is almost 6 p.m. Why is it taking so much time for crying out loud? I am tired and really hungry. Some chewous meal for me. Patiently waiting for 30 minutes. It is almost time for me to eat. I totally forgot. Let me quickly pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the grace you gave me to fast today. It is not yet time. Please take all the glory, Father Lord. I ask that you answer my prayers, my long-term request of financial breakthrough and marital success. This food is getting cold. It's 6 p.m. In Jesus' name I have prayed. Amen. This is beautiful to watch. I am so tired and hungry. I need to eat. My eyes are seriously itching me. I can't even pray now. I'm so tired. I'll just eat and pray later when I've gathered enough energy. I am happy to be doing this with you. I couldn't wait to conclude the fasting. But you concluded the fasting few minutes ago. That's because I couldn't wait. I have been thinking about it since. Oh. That's nice. Do not worry, we will have fun tonight. That's what I like. The Lord is good. 
I am so happy I am here as one of the testifiers. I give God all the glory and honor. He made way where there seems to be no way. I wrote down all my or a request before I started this year seven days fasting and prayer, and to God be the glory, he has answered all my prayers. God is faithful. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Lord has finally done it in my life. I received unexpected blessings from God. I was hoping for something small initially, but little did I know that God's plan for me is bigger than the plan I had for myself. I secured an international job, got engaged to my fiancé and we will be having our wedding in two months' time. Praise the Lord. Come to think of it, everyone has been testifying since that their prayers got answered. Why is mine different? I have been joining them in this fast for six years now, yet, the Lord has not answered one out of my prayer request. What have I done to the Lord? Why is everyone happy and rejoicing in this church, and them sad? This is not fair at all. God has neglected me. Despite the fact that I never missed this fast yearly, I put all my time into fasting, and God still did not have mercy on me. I see people testify here all the time, but my case is different. I am just so sad right now. Mr. Jason, I was told you were crying heavily during the program. I had to tell the ushers to bring you here. What is happening with you? Pastor, I have been a member of this church for over six years now. And I was there when you said the Holy Spirit instruct you to observe a seven days fasting and prayer annually. I have since then made sure I partake in the fasting. I see people testify yearly after the fasting, but a single prayer request of mine has never been answered. Does God hate me this much? This is here breaking. Pastor, I am tired of seeing people testify and all I can do is to be looking like a lost sheep. Mr. Jason, God doesn't hate you. God is not wicked. Let me ask you a question. Are you sincere with your fasting and prayer? Because God has been wonderful. Pastor, I have been really consistent with this fasting and prayer. Mr. Jason, how often do you fast and pray? I fast when you announce the yearly fasting. I am very busy at work so I don't really have chance to pray. No. It shouldn't be. Can you be sincere with me and tell me how the fasting went for you? I mean everything that happened during the period that you fasted. Pastor, I hope you won't judge me, because I am tired already. I promised to tell you the truth about everything. On Sunday, I went out with my friends to eat at a restaurant. I had so much to eat and I used the toilet for three times before I could feel better. On Monday, when I started the fast, I woke up feeling tired and I just said a little prayer. I won't lie to you, I was contemplating on whether to fast till 6 p.m. that day, I couldn't wait in the evening and I was already hungry. I had to tell my boss that I was fasting and couple of my colleagues about it because I feel it is a spiritual journey and they should be aware. Mr. Jason, thank you for being sincere with me. But I must tell you, you've been fasting the wrong way for a long time. Some Christians do not know that they aren't fasting properly. I'll tell you six things you do that hinders your fasting and prayer and how to fast properly. 1. Announcing to the public that you are fasting, or telling everyone around you about your fast. Mr. Jason, number one thing that you shouldn't do when fasting is publicizing your fast. In Christian teachings, fasting is often regarded as a personal and spiritual practice. Jesus himself emphasized the importance of humility and sincerity in fasting, warning against the hypocrisy of those who make a show of their fasting to impress others. In the Gospel of Matthew 5:16-18, Jesus says, "When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward." But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your Father, who is unseen, 
and your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. This passage underscores the principle that fasting should be a private matter between an individual and God, rather than a public display of piety. It's about the attitude of the heart rather than outward appearances. Publicizing one's fast can lead to pride and self-righteousness, which are antithetical to the spirit of fasting. However, it's also important to note that there are instances in the Bible where fasting is proclaimed publicly, such as in times of communal repentance or seeking God's intervention in a specific matter. In the book of Joel, 1.14, the prophet calls for a solemn assembly, proclaiming, Declare a holy fast. Call a sacred assembly. Summon the elders and all who live in the land to the house of the Lord your God, and cry out to the Lord. Even if you are to publicize your fast, it shall be among likey minds that wants to engage in that fast with you. So, while there are biblical precedents for publicizing fasting in certain contexts, the key distinction lies in the motivation behind it. If one's intention is to draw attention to their own piety or to seek validation from others, then it goes against the teachings of Jesus. Fasting should be done with a humble and contrite heart, seeking God's will above all else. 2. Fasting without prayer and studying the Word of God. In the Christian faith, Fasting is often accompanied by prayer and reading of the Bible as a means of drawing closer to God and seeking His guidance. However, there are instances where some individuals may focus solely on the act of fasting without giving due attention to prayer and studying the scriptures. This can lead to a superficial or ritualistic approach to fasting, which may hinder its spiritual impact. The Bible provides guidance on the importance of combining fasting with prayer and meditation on God's Word. In the book of Isaiah, 58, 6-7, the Lord rebukes the Israelites for their empty fasting, saying, Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen, to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke? Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter, when you see the naked, to clothe them, and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood? Here, the emphasis is on the true purpose of fasting, which is to seek justice and mercy, reflecting God's heart for the marginalized and oppressed. He also teaches his disciples about the importance of prayer and fasting in spiritual warfare emphasizing the need for a strong spiritual foundation. Matthew 17 21 Therefore, it is clear from scripture that fasting should not be divorced from prayer and the study of God's word. Rather, it should be a holistic spiritual practice that encompasses all aspects of one's relationship with God. Fasting without prayer and reading the Bible can lead to a shallow and ritualistic form of spirituality that misses the deeper significance of fasting as a means of seeking God's will and aligning oneself with His purposes. 3. Thinking about food during fasting or anticipating food to be eaten while on fast. Fasting is a spiritual discipline that requires focus, self-control, and a deliberate turning away from worldly desires, including the desire for food. However, some Christians may find themselves fasting while constantly thinking about food and eagerly anticipating the moment when they can break their fast. This mindset can hinder the true purpose of fasting and detract from its spiritual benefits. In the Bible, fasting is often associated with seeking God's guidance, repentance, and spiritual renewal. It is a time of self-denial and reliance on God's strength. Fasting with a mindset focused on food and the anticipation of breaking the fast can retract from its spiritual purpose. Instead of drawing closer to God and seeking His will, 
This mindset can lead to a preoccupation with physical desires and a lack of spiritual growth. It is important for Christians to approach fasting with a heart that is truly seeking God's presence and guidance, setting aside worldly distractions and desires. You need to be able to concentrate and focus on the main importance of you fasting, rather than anticipating or putting the thought of food in you or even rushing your prayers, because you want to go and eat. If you can only fast till 3 p.m., please do so. Pray diligently without reaching a limit where all you can think about is food. 4. Committing sin and engaging in acts that can hinder prayer. Fasting is a spiritual practice intended to draw Christians closer to God, seeking His guidance and strength. However, fasting can be hindered when individuals engage in sinful behavior, such as lust or anger, during the fasting period. These actions can detract from the spiritual focus of fasting and hinder one's relationship with God. In the Bible, sin is often seen as a barrier that separates individuals from God. Psalm 66, 18 says, If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. This verse highlights the importance of repentance and turning away from sin in order to have a close relationship with God. When Christians engage in sinful behavior, especially during times of fasting and prayer, it can hinder their spiritual growth and weaken their connection to God. Jesus also spoke about the impact of sin on fasting and prayer. In Matthew 5 23-24, he says, Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to them. Then come and offer your gift. This passage emphasizes the importance of resolving conflicts and addressing sin in one's life before engaging in acts of worship, including fasting and prayer. Therefore, Christians who engage in sinful behavior, such as lust or anger, during times of fasting may find that their spiritual efforts are hindered. Instead of drawing closer to God, these actions can create a barrier that separates them from Him. It is important for Christians to strive for holiness and purity in all aspects of their lives, especially during times of fasting and prayer. 5 complaining and murmuring to God during fasting instead of praising and thanking God. Fasting is a spiritual discipline that is often accompanied by prayer, praise, and thanksgiving to God. However, some Christians may approach fasting with a complaining and murmuring attitude, which can hinder the spiritual benefits of fasting and create a barrier between them and God. In the Bible, the Israelites provide a clear example of how complaining and murmuring can hinder one's relationship with God. In the book of Exodus, the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness, saying, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted, but you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Exodus 16, 3. Their complaining attitude displeased God, and He responded by providing manna for them to eat, but also chastised them for their lack of faith and gratitude. Exodus 16, 4 to 8. Similarly, in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul warns against complaining and murmuring, urging believers to instead focus on praising and thanking God. In Philippians 2.14-15, he writes, Do everything without grumbling or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky. This passage emphasizes the importance of maintaining a positive and thankful attitude, even in the midst of difficult circumstances. Therefore, Christians who fast with a complaining and murmuring attitude may find that their fasting is hindered and ineffective. Instead of drawing closer to God, 
their attitude of complaint can create a barrier between them and God. It is important for believers to approach fasting with a heart of gratitude and praise, recognizing God's goodness and provision in their lives. The last but not the least and most important is that as Christians, we need to be consistent in our fasting and prayers. Fasting is a spiritual discipline that is meant to be regular practice for Christians, not just an occasional obligation. While it's understandable that there may be seasons or reasons for fasting less frequently, approaching fasting with a sense of obligation or pressure can hinder its spiritual impact. In the Bible, fasting is portrayed as a voluntary and intentional act of devotion. Jesus himself fasted for forty days and nights in the wilderness, setting an example for his followers Matthew 4, 1-2. He also taught about the importance of fasting in a way that is sincere and heartfelt, rather than a mere outward show Matthew 6, 16-18. The Apostle Paul also emphasized the importance of self-discipline and perseverance in the Christian life, comparing it to the training of athletes. 1 Corinthians 9:24-27. Just as athletes must train regularly to maintain their strength and skill, so too must Christians practice spiritual disciplines like fasting to grow in their faith and resist the temptations of the devil. Speaking of the devil, Peter warns believers to be vigilant and sober-minded because the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. 1 Peter 5, 8 The devil is cunning and often seeks to tempt believers when they are spiritually weak or complacent. If Christians become lax in their fasting and other spiritual disciplines, they may become more vulnerable to the devil's attacks. Therefore, Christians should not approach fasting as a burdensome obligation, but rather as a means of drawing closer to God and strengthening their faith. By fasting regularly and with the right attitude, believers can resist the devil's schemes and experience the spiritual growth and renewal that fasting can bring. Know this, it is not a must you fast for seven days in a week, except if mandatory, but as Christians, you need to observe at least one day fast in a week. Mr. Jason, these are the things some Christians often do to hinder their fasting and prayers. So in conclusion, do not announce to everyone that you are fasting. Do not anticipate or focus on food, let your focus be on God. Ensure you praise and thank God instead of murmurings. Avoid sin totally. Make sure you are consistent in your fasting and prayer and make sure you pray in between, not praying when you are about to break your fast. May the peace of the Lord be with you. I am guilty of all these pastor. Now, I know better. I will go back to God and do the needful. I was just deceiving myself all in the name of fasting. Ah, oh, thank you pastor for this priceless word. All glory belongs to God. Close your eyes, let us pray.